S, so the Derby. I'll put the address on at the end. And we've got my crank on the bench. Nice setup here, lots of lots of machines, some nice motors. Sorry, what's your name again? Nigel. 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 Yeah. So this is my crank, just been cleaned up. I'm going to measure it now. Okay, the results are in on the mains. I'll show you that the right way up. Yeah. Uh, so 0.01 of a so, millimetre. So we're looking at a range there uh, of uh, 0.01 of a millimetre, which is just slightly less than half a thou. So for a second-hand crank, um, name bearing size-wise size and uh, ovality-wise is certainly well within acceptable limits. Excellent. So do we check these now? Or? Yeah, we'll yeah. do the big ends. Uh, sorry, yeah, the big ends. Uh, travels all the way through the crank and pops out to the other end and that's the oil supply for your mains and your big ends so it's coming in in the end and there, there are drillings in there basically so the the whole of the crank has got a, an oil pathway that goes in there comes through there back up back up through there so oil can get from one end of the crank right the way all the way around so what's the purpose of this? Well, have? obviously, th these will have been drilled yeah. at some point or another um, to facilitate the holes, so that's how you get the holes in there. But then obviously, you don't want oil coming out of those holes, so they just block them up. Right. So it's basically, uh, that's a, a, a manufacturing thing. Right. Um, but that's the oil way, and it's been blocked up, and that's the oil drilling there. Brilliant, thank you. Um, so when you take those out, and basically what happens is oil... Uh, Sludge will collect in there, right? Um, and so over over time, um, it is a good idea to take them out and then and get it washed out. No amount of soaking would clean that. That is that not you're, really? You'll find that it just okay. it won't it won't come out. Okay. It'll just stay in there. And um, the you know the only da the danger with that is that at some point or another, it could get dislodged. And if it guffs it out of one of your into one of your big ends or your mains, it, 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 it could cause damage, yeah. you know. Um, it might spin a bearing or seize up or just pick up on a bearing. So that needs taken out and I cleaning. would say and that again. Cleaning or, or Loctite, would that do it? Or? Well, you mean to put it back in? Yeah. Um, well, you could do the same again. You could clean just, them over, just, just clean, them back, over. clean them back over. I, I wouldn't Loctite it. I think no. I'd have a physical means of holding them in, okay. which would, would be a, a peen them over like that. Okay. Yeah. Right. Good. Um, Okay. Um, no appreciable ovality, just a little bit of discoloration really, but that, most of that will polish out. Okay, so that's all it needs, a bit of a polish? I would say, yeah, that's it's pretty good. I mean, um, again, I think for peace of mind, I'll be, I'll be thinking of crack testing and we'll, we would, if we were going to kind of take it any further, we'd check it just for make sure it won't bent in any way, shape or form. So we could just get that on a lathe and okay. spin it up and just run a clock over it. Um, but right. I'm sure it'll be fine. Good. What should we look at now then? Um, um, the biggest point. They're oval on purpose. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and they're, and they're usually tapered as well. The biggest dimension is usually across the um, gudgeon pin, basically at 90 degrees to the gudgeon, the axis to the gudgeon pin. Round about there, usually about half inch up from the skirt of the piston. So that is your biggest point there. As you start to come round here, you'll find that it'll get smaller, increasing in clearance, which is why you've got this area here where it's quite shiny, because that's sort of where you've, you've, it's not kind of like rubbing as such, but that area there is the area that is the closest to becoming in contact with the bore. Um, in the block. And is it norm this this these marks are off the ball, these Yeah, it's here. kind of, it's kinda of just where it's been rubbing a little bit, yeah. Yeah, you see this area rear, that's never been in contact with the ball. Right. Um, and that's what you expect to find. Okay. That's how that's how most of invariably what they look like. So I um, thought this was caused by blowback this mark, is that not no no, no. no. it's it's realistically that well I'll prove it to you in a minute. We'll okay, yeah. we'll mic them up and I'll show you. Slightly smaller, not much. 
but it's about by, it's got a th smaller by about a foul, and it's getting smaller again the further up I come. Okay. If I rotate that, you'll find this, this bit probably. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's about 82.7. So that's a good eight thou smaller across there. Right. Okay. Um, and that, that's you know that's what you expect. That's okay. what you expect. And it will be even smaller up here. Yeah, I mean that's about that's almost down to eighty two point five. So there's there's about point four of a millimetre difference to the widest point and the, uh, um, and the narrowest point. Okay. Um, and so basically, what, what that realistically means is the main control area, if you like, yeah, for a piston running up and down a bore is, is usually that area there. About half inch up from the skirt and 90 degrees to the gudgeon pin. Right. So, uh, uh, further up the piston you get, the, the smaller it gets. Okay. So there's more clearance. So what, what can we check on these to see if they're any good? Well, realistically, um, it's, well, we'll ascertain what, what uh, a mean size for all these pistons. Okay. And then we'll have a look what kind of clearance you've got in your ball. Okay. Um, but so these are the numbers for my pistons, which are acceptable. And then we just found this bit that has the number one piston. And it's like a little spring piece that fits in this oil ring somehow. So quite lucky we found that. Have a look at the block now. And I washed this yesterday and it's rusty as hell already. I should have dried that better. It's only surface stuff. So I'm just going to give that a clean up. Um, one thing on the pistons, which I've never seen before, this little bit, this little bit here, it's actually under this middle ring, although the, the, the lower, the lower piston ring, and there it is in that one. So that looks like a, it should be a almost continuous circle, and a little bit has broke off. So it's quite fortunate that um, I noticed that. sometimes only just over a thou. The, the, the general rule of thumb, a lot of the time, is thou per inch. So if you've got a two inch bore, you'd expect to see two thou clearance between the piston and um, the bore. But um, jags were quite a bit closer. It's a lot to do with piston design, the types of pistons that we use. Some pistons are far more stable than others. Um, and I say, the Jaguars, they, they did you run quite a tight clearance. Okay. But um, I would be expecting to see somewhat like about a tooth, probably tooth out. Might even be tighter, but not, not much more than a couple of hours. With a micrometer, what your bore size is. So we've got the bore size, now we're just going to check that with the piston size, see what the difference is. So, and I'd say you mean, you mean piston size is, um, well, let's call it. Let's be kind to ourselves and call 8294. 
Well, no, it's just a fictitious character from the uh, from the song when the skin is made. Nice. Eight two. Very good. Good very good man. Good one. There is a song. Point one three. So you're running point one three clearance. Millimeters. Yeah. Point one three, which is just over five thousand. It's quite generous. Um, it is quite generous, but it's not. It's not. It's not going to cause you a lot of problems. It might. Okay. It might. It might burn a bit of oil. Um, but do we, do we do we actually know what the specs should be on this or um, we'd have to we'd have to go on the internet and find out um, obviously a positive identification what what actually this is my crank being set up on the lathe I'm just gonna give it a polish just gonna stand back a bit in case it flies off that would hurt if it uh, hit you, wouldn't it? Oh, machine's broke. Here we go, take two. Okay, first pass on that. What grit is that? It's 160. 160, then. And we work down the grits to uh, make it shine. We're doing the mains now. The crank's still being uh, polished there, so just to show you these boards. These have been not exactly honed, it's more of a finishing finishing brush, abrasive brush. Those have come up quite nice. And something to check on the pistons. On, on some of these, the gudgeon pin moves with the piston. It doesn't, it's not, not exactly seized, but this one needs taken apart and cleaning and checking. <laughs> What's this grade, Nathan? 120. Okay. And it's yeah, it's 120, sorry, it's 240. 240. Yeah. Is there another stage after that? No, that's it. I'll okay. just go for as long as it uh, takes to get all the marks off. Okay. Normally... There we are, all done. Excellent, thank you Nathan.